We're going to be spending uh, two weeks, a bit of a mini-series in the Gospel of John. Uh, So if you turn there, uh, John chapter 10, verse 10. And really, uh, this verse is more of a, a launching verse to the theme of life and death, <clears throat> paths and choices that we make, uh, and both are uh, really just a step away. Uh, we take a, a step on a path that leads to life or a step on a path that leads to death. Um, in both of those paths and choices, we have one Uh, both encouraging us and cheering us on in the path and towards a direction. Um, And the first one that we're going to look at today uh, is death uh, because of the wording of the verse. Uh, If you're there, would you read along with me? John 10, verse 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. <clears throat> so we're going to be looking at this verse, and today we'll be looking on the, on the dark side, if you would. Uh, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill. There's a verse in Romans chapter 6 that says, But the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And we see again, uh, that, that choice of, of, if you will, light and darkness. And I've often wondered, for the Christian, how does that uh, play out in the way we live our lives? Because for the lost, it's simple. The wages of sin is death. We're outside of Christ. We're outside of life. We're separated from God who gives life. So there's no contemplating uh, the wages for sin is death. Um, separation from God eternally. Uh, now and eternally. <clears throat> but for the Christian, uh, is there still a price to be paid for sin? Um, and I would say yes. Um, the wages for sin is still death. Not eternal death in any way. We've been eternally saved, praise God. But there still is, if you think of a, a fruit branch, or some of you have green thumbs, some of you have black thumbs. <clears throat> when you touch it, it, it lives or it dies. And, and that's the way it is for even for the Christian, eternally saved, that we can be bearing fruit and, and blossoming in, in life as we stay connected regardless of circumstances. Or we can make choices outside of God's will uh, titled as sin. And it can lead towards death. Not to our spirit, but to our soul and to our body. Both of these things still are at the mercy of your uh, free will and mine. So as we look into uh, The Thief Cometh Not, we're going to kind of dive into uh, uh, the dark end of the pool. I I believe probably many of us have a dark story. My cousin Ray has this Ouija board story. Um... And uh, I've been terrified, terrified, and uh, probably from my upbringing to go anywhere near. I don't even like to see them in, in the stores. Uh, I'll take a wide path. And that's probably being silly. But uh, Ray's story about the Ouija board did not help my, my fear of this dark, dark uh, spiritual things. Somebody had brought it to his house, and it was in the, uh, the back of a car. And, and Ray saw it, and he's like, oh, my goodness. He didn't want any part of it. So he took it and he heaved it uh, into the, this really nasty, brambly, uh, thick brushes. And uh, he, I know Ray, and I don't see any reason why he would lie. I can't imagine how it happened. But he's like, the next day, the Ouija board was back in, in the, I don't know if it was back in the car, but whatever. He was totally freaked out. Um, and I would be freaked out, and I am. But we have God, and greater is he that is in you and I, that is heathen in the world. But my point of the message is let's, as we, before we even take the step uh, on these paths, life is steps, continual steps, steps of faith, steps of uh, carnality. It is just steps. And so I want to make us aware each step uh, can be uh, a step of faith 
walking with God in light or a step towards darkness. And, and Jesus Christ and the word of God cheering and encouraging us, yes, continue on. Or honestly, things of our flesh um, encouraging us on. Yes, go ahead, explore a little bit in that direction. Or you don't really need to show up at church again. Uh, you were just there Friday or whatever. Um, so we've got these different um, natures and, and forces cheering us on uh, to walk uh, in directions. And so I want us to be thinking about that uh, as, we, as we get into today's message. Uh, so let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be careful of our steps. Lord, as we look in your word, Lord, help us to, uh, to learn what you'd have us to learn, to be warned of what you'd have us to be careful of and to be diligent in areas where we should be diligent. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, and we're going to read right from the start, 1 to 8. <clears throat> if you're there, say amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for two amens. It says this in Mark 5, verse 1, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I jure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he had said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. We see Jesus, it seems no sooner has he put his foot on the shore than this man with an unclean spirit uh, meets him, running towards him. Uh, and it seems that Jesus had an appointment uh, and he's gone out of his way to make this appointment. We know that he's traveled through a storm uh, with his disciples and he's calmed the storm and they've arrived for a purpose, a pointed purpose, to meet this man with these unclean spirits. And as we, uh, as God's children, and I pray as I look, uh, we're home folk today and I'm glad that you're here uh, I hope each one of you has been saved. And if you've been saved, then God has appointments for you and I throughout the day. I heard a man say that he wasn't sure if God cared if we ate at McDonald's or Burger King uh, or the deli, you know, you name it. And I believe for those of us that go through life not sharing and not uh, engaged in the battle, I believe it's true. I don't think it matters if I eat at McDonald's or Burger King. But imagine this. If we're engaged in the fight, if we're engaged in choosing steps of God, um, I believe I led him into the Lord at McDonald's once. He was sitting off by himself. Um, and on that occasion... I believe very specifically that God cared which one I ate at. So I want us to be thinking and praying about appointments that God has for each one of us. He cares. Um, if you're his child and you're engaged in the battle, he cares. If you've disengaged from the battle, um, he still cares, but it probably doesn't matter uh, which one you ate at. If, if regardless of which you won't say a word for the Lord, he wants you to. And when you, when you 
um, get there as Jesus, just when he arrived, if you'd be willing to pray, God, it's very outside my realm, it's outside of my everything to speak a word for you. But if you would pray, Lord, put in front of me that one and make it obvious. Um, I prayed a prayer like that as a young man. I don't know if I was 19 or 21, but I was around that age and I had prayed very specifically. Lord, put somebody right in front of me that needs to hear from you. And I was at that uh, weird spot in Mil Milford. Uh, back, if you remember long enough, um, some of you do, there used to be a, a, like a guy would be in this kind of weird booth directing um, right in the center of Milford. Um, I was there, and uh, I had prayed pointedly, Lord, put somebody right in front of me. So I went to the 7-Eleven to grab whatever, and uh, as I'm walking by, there's this lady hysterically crying in the car. And I mean, her window, out of, out of consideration, you'd think you'd roll the windows up if you're going to be hysterically crying. But she is just crying. She didn't care who saw or heard. Her windows are down. And as I'm walking past, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if this could be what God put in front of me. And so I paused and I said, can I help you? Uh, and she, she kind of wiped her face a bit and, and caught her breath. And she said, no. And um, from the looks of the crying, I probably definitely couldn't. But I had been praying so. And, and because I trusted the Lord would answer the prayer, I had taken a couple steps back. And I'm like, this seems like it's, it's meant to be. So I turned back. I said, are you sure that I can't help you? And she said, yeah, I'm sure. And I walked away kind of... Shaking my head, I'm like, boy, I thought that was what God had for me. Uh, and so for the point of this illustration is as you, maybe God brings you to that appointment, I needed to learn. She was right. I couldn't help her. But I wasn't going representing me. And so if you pray that prayer, God, put somebody in front of me that uh, as an appointment that I could minister today, make sure as you arrive at the appointment, uh, uh, you might say, can I help you? But make sure it's followed by, can I pray with you? Or is there something, uh, yes, maybe something practical, but that lady said, no, you can't help me. I bet she was in such a condition where she would have heard a prayer and we could have pointed her to God. Uh, and God through prayer, not just as a to placate, but God answers prayer. Uh, so be careful of that when you go. We see immediately God... Uh, in this appointment, Jesus was met by this madman. Um, in verse 3 through 5, we see the scary nature of the devil. We see he's in the tombs. Uh, the story, yeah, I love, I love Maylee's picture. You wouldn't, well, when you were younger, you probably wouldn't want to venture through uh, that picture, especially if the beautiful light behind the tree wasn't there. Uh, it's a dark place and we see this even uh, in practicality it seems that the devil prefers uh, darkness <clears throat> he's, he's cutting himself he's crying out uh, night and day um, he, people are trying to tame him and he can't be tamed he's in conflict with all of God's creation he's being bound uh, and he's in, in strife and interestingly as Jesus arrives on the shore we see the inner conflict that takes place between even you and I, between our spiritual nature that's birthed that salvation and our old nature that's continually with us. We see this man, for some reason, running towards Jesus. Uh, but when he saw Jesus in verse five, 6, afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And that means he did what was suitable. He had humility and he had reverence to the son of god he fell before him and he cried with a loud voice what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of the most high god and we can see a conflict and in your nature and my nature paul addresses it in romans the things that i want to do i don't do and the things i don't want to do i do and we see it here this man running if 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 there was unison and harmony in this man's life, he would have slipped away back into one of his, his haunts or his dwelling places. 
But yet something inside of him was longing to have peace with Jesus. He runs towards Jesus, and at the same time, there's something inside of him saying, what have I to do? Please don't torment me. And as you and I live this Christian life, do you know we can torment ourselves by dabbling in things that are in conflict with the new nature that God's put inside of you? Which one of us feels better after strife? Has there ever been a movie that you've watched and you're just like, oh, why? Why, when, at the first moment when my finger was wanting to shut it off, did I not shut it off? Uh, we, we just continue down paths. And, um, but it's in conflict with what God's put in you in his Holy Spirit. Uh, peace and joy, long-suffering, those fruits of the Spirit. I want to finish the story. Uh, so we're going to read 9, nine through 19. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was, now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they, had fed, and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And, went, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might <clears throat> be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, and said unto him, Go home to thy friends, tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. We see a tremendous change that takes place in this one who at one point was in great conflict. Uh, he runs to Jesus and says, would, would you help me? Would you free me? And I like, the, when they say the legion, um, that's many. You'll hear different numbers. Uh, it's kind of a Roman army uh, term. Uh, and it applies to many, many. Th it could be thousands. And I love to see, um, sometimes we worry. We may worry about the Ouija board. Or we may worry about spiritual conflict. But do you know, you and I have the Holy Spirit living in us that spirit of God. And look at the uh, submission that a thousand demons have before Jesus Christ with no, no conflict at all as far as Jesus. Jesus is not sweating. He doesn't roll up his sleeves. He arrives. And a thousand demons uh, pay him reverence uh, and, and, and beg him, please don't torment us before our time. What a Savior that you and I have. Let's be careful not to dabble in uh, things having to do with uh, the enemy and that, that other nature that he's freed us from. I wanted to point out a couple of the changes uh, in this man. Uh, and I pray that there's changes in you and I the way we live our lives. We see when, when the folks that were keeping the swine and those that owned the swine arrive, they see this man sitting uh, peaceably at the feet of Jesus, where at one point he was running and, they, and men were trying to bind him with chains uh, and there was a, a fight. We see that he's peaceable. We see that they noted that he's clothed and in his right mind. Uh, I think we can assume 
by that text that he was uh, naked. Um, and, and in the Jewish uh, time period, naked could have simply meant that your thigh was exposed. So at the beaches, we would all be naked. Uh, but we don't know at what level this man uh, was um, immodest. But we, they noted that he was clothed. Uh, they also noted that he was in his right mind. Let's be careful uh, around the holidays. I don't know if some of you have a conviction uh, not to touch alcohol in any way. Um, I hope that each of us have a, a conviction not to touch uh, different substances uh, in any way. But anything that would foggy or muddy your mind uh, shouldn't be. Uh, as we uh, have the Spirit of God dwelling in us, let's be filled with the Spirit and let's let our mind be totally and 100% uh, pure, uh, pure and clean, ready to do God's will. And he's sitting at Jesus' feet. I used to go into North Avenue quite often, uh, and uh, a senior member of our team, senior in every way, he was um, an elderly gentleman, and his, his forehead was drawn as a cartoon figure. The, the furrows in his, his forehead were almost um, animated. They were very funny. And he, probably one out of four times into the jail, he would preach on this topic. Uh, and when he would get to this part, at the feet of Jesus, he would, he would note that to be sitting uh, here as you are, listening to the word of God, is so similar to that man at the feet of Jesus. Jesus, who's the word made flesh. Uh, Jesus, who's the living word of God. And as we uh, are fed by the written word of God, we're not too different. Uh, and that man, as that babe in faith, um, he's sitting and he's being fed by the word of God. What a marvelous thing. And what a marvelous uh, change that had taken place. A little bit of a warning. As the men that owned the swine uh, and those that came out of, out of curiosity, um, imagine the uh, pain in the side that this man was to the community. Um, don't go anywhere near over there. The madman of Gadara will get you. Uh, and there really was. This was not a boogeyman story. There was a madman of Gadara. Uh, don't go over there. Uh, and Jesus rids the community of this plague. Um, and I understand if they were my 2,000 pigs, I probably would have been like, Jesus, couldn't you send him into some birds? Or uh, those, you know, uh, I don't know how I would have been. But imagine this, so committed to uh, their way of life. Please don't, don't rock our boat. Uh, don't alter uh, our lives. Uh, if you could just uh, get back on that boat uh, and leave. And you and I might, as we read and study, uh, I'm with you, kind of shake your head like, what, what were they thinking? And yet, don't you and I live our lives a little bit that way? We have things that we're comfortable with Jesus, don't, don't rock the boat. I, I, yeah, I don't, uh, I'm not picking on anyone today. I, I want you to do what God has for you. Um, but I, I remember when, uh, I don't even know if any young people know this word, but goth, uh, that, that look came in. Uh, and I'm not asking you to throw out your black nail polish. Uh, I like black nail polish. But let's, let's as we live our life, be careful to represent the light. Let's be careful to steer wide from anything that will influence our spirit uh, as would please Satan. Um, this man at one point is saying, depart from me. And now he runs up to Jesus. It says, 18, and when he was come into the ship, Jesus is getting ready to leave. When he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Is it your desire to be around the word of God, to be around uh, brothers and sisters in Christ? Uh, our church doors are typically only opened once a week. I'm from a church where the church doors were opened many times a week, probably four, at least four times a week. 
And the preacher would often say, every time the church doors are open, uh, make it a point uh, to be there. Uh, and I did that. And I don't ever want anyone to be guilted because on a couple of those occasions, four or five times a week, you're like, I think I'd rather be home with my wife. Um, so I do get it. Uh, but is there a desire in your heart to be around things of God? This man, as he met Jesus and was freed from that tremendous uh, burden of the legion, imagine the peace that came in and his desire was clear. He says, Jesus, can I spend the rest of my life even with you? I want to follow you. And Jesus says to him, in verse 19, Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends. Tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath compassion on thee. Do you realize some of us that have been saved uh, as young people, um, you have not had the delivery story saved out of the biker gangs or, you know, you were in some deep, dark hole in a prison camp. And, you know, our testimonies are just simply, I heard about Jesus' love and I understood the cross and I accepted him. And from a young age, we're guided uh, to make careful choices. Whether it's that or you have that testimony, um, we've been freed and we've been purchased and we've been brought into such a, a beautiful uh, life. Uh, the, Jesus' pastures, uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, and you've prepared a place. The places Jesus have prepared for us are green pastures. They're good for our soul. They're good for our life. So today, let's be careful. Uh, next week, as we look at life, um, will encourage us in the direction, but today, Let's steer clear on purpose of uh, paths that would rob from what God has. The thief comes not. If you look at that word rob and thief, they're two different meanings. Uh, the thief sneaks in. Uh, he sneaks in at night, um, tries to get, get in, get out without being seen. Uh, the robber, on the other hand, uh, doesn't mind if you see him or not. He'll beat you up in the process uh, and take what you have. But as we looked at that, John 10, 10, uh, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill. Either way, if we leave God's path and we leave God's will, something's going to be rob robbed from us. Something's going to be taken. So let's be careful. Let's pray. God, we love you. I pray that each one here today would pray a simple prayer, Lord. God, I believe there's an appointment for me even today or this work week, Lord. Might I be looking for it, Lord, and, and when it comes my way, might I be prepared to speak for you. A simple word, Lord, uh, praise God, or even a more in-depth thought, Lord, that Jesus loves you, or even a scripture passage. Lord, we need you. Uh, encourage us, Lord, as we uh, get into the, uh, the time period, past the holidays and sing settle and quiet, Lord, might we be uh, just as diligent uh, in your word and in prayer, help us to be careful. In Jesus' name, amen.